investments in the electrical uh, electric vehicle industry also in upgrading the u.s electric grid join us now to talk about that is u.s energy secretary uh, jennifer granholm and secretary granholm it's great to see you uh, thank the, you great to be on we were just talking to tom friedman about uh, I, I think one of the things he he wants us to do is make sure that that we spend this as effectively and efficiently as we can because that's the environment that, that we're in right now. So just a couple of ideas in, in terms of, of the, the grid and trying to improve it. One of the initiatives, and I'm sure you're, you had something to do with it, is to decarbonize the grid by 2035, which means you're going to need a lot of, of clean energy loaded onto the grid, which uh, the journal points out 20 gigawatts of high capacity power lines need to be built between California and Texas. And that's a similar um, initiative was blocked by environmentalists from Canada to the Northeast for hydropower. Is there gonna be a, an issue trying to, the, the same people that wanna go green, there's a lot of regulations and trying to actually affect it. How will you handle that? Well, first of all, you're right about the regulations. There is a huge patchwork across the country about how you get grid transmission cited to begin with because it shares power, shares responsibility between state, locals. There's a lot of not in my backyardism, et cetera. Honestly, we need to add capacity to the grid. We need to make it more resilient and we need to make it cyber, cyber uh, attack proof. We need to make it secure. We need the investment in the transmission grid for a whole variety of reasons, including that there are increased climate events that are knocking power out uh, more repeatedly every single year. We pay $70 billion a year just in the cost of, of the power outages alone. So we need a, bit, a better grid. And we're gonna make, you know, we're gonna do what we need to do to incentivize coordination to ensure we can get the siting. And now if we get this through uh, the Congress, we will have the means to be able to bring our grid up to speed for both capacity and for resilience. Yeah, Madam Secretary, I'm wondering whether you, where, where were you on, on easing the National Environmental Policy Act reviews? Did you argue to, to do that? It's been highlighted again and again how difficult, costly, and how long it takes for these, these reviews to try and get anything done. And yeah, it, uh, Democrats refuse to, to allow that. And, and uh, I mean, are you okay with, with how cumbersome it is? To, these no. things you want to do. <laughs> and, and, uh, did, well, didn't you argue it's maybe so that, that we, sh we should relax? I hate the bureaucracy. I hate it. No, so it's really important that government is nimble, that government is flexible, that government is efficient, that government is quick. And that's true all the way through. So I think we need to do, and we are doing internally, sort of a value stream mapping process. Where are the areas of redundancy? What is taking us so long? Can we collapse permitting times? Can we have reciprocity? So yeah, we need to speed things up. And that's part of what can be incentivized, both at the state and local level, as well as the federal level. Because there's, as they say, that we have a patchwork. This is what America is. It's it's the beautiful part of America, but it also means that there are overlapping jurisdictions that need to coordinate better to streamline more so that it's more efficient. It's been pointed out that, that trying to transition our economy to electric vehicles, at this point, it, they're not as economically um, you know, it's not as easy to, to, to run one as it is to, to do the existing structure I don't know, that man. we have. You obviously do not have an EV. I have had an electric vehicle now for six years. Now I lease it and I lease solar panels on my roof. And it is, I, I drive a Chevy Bolt. It is the best car I have ever had. But it still needs subsidies. It, it still needs subsidies from the government to make it economically. Feasible. Well, here's what I would say on this. This is a great question because because of the investments we've made in research and development. At, I mean, the Department of Energy is oversees 17 national labs, and a lot of them are working on bringing down costs, right? And the private sector obviously teamed on this. The cost of the battery, which is the biggest expense in an electric vehicle, has dropped 90% since 2010, and it's going to continue to drop. So you're going to see a point where the actual upfront cost of the EV, of the electric vehicle, is the same price as a traditional vehicle. You're seeing it now, I and mean, you're seeing, obviously, much lower entrance into the market. It's what GM, it's what Ford, it's what Tesla is working on. 
And on top of that, the savings that you have from plugging in versus gassing up is enormous. It's $600 a year for your average citizen. So it is an, an, a much better alternative and people will start to see that more and more. You're, you're right in that the uptake hasn't been as great because the infrastructure across the country hasn't been there. And that's part of what this American Jobs Plan is seeking to resolve. Seems like a gas tax always, you know, that, that, that's worked in the past. Those are the people that, you know, a, a usage tax. But you, you've got to elect, you'll get around that. I don't know. Maybe you need to, to, uh, to contribute some money to, to it with because you, you won't be paying a gas tax. Is that why you got that vault? Madam Secretary? Well, it, it's, it's a benefit, I suppose. <laughs> I got them both because I wanted to do my part. And I love them. I'm telling you, it's such a great car. But, um, you know, this whole point about paying for the infrastructure is an important point, right? Yep. And the president has put forward a plan to be able to do that. That does not include a gas tax. But going down the road, we have to figure out how, we, how do we fund this infrastructure on an ongoing basis. It's a very good point. All right, Madam Secretary, thank you. It's great having you on. I hope to see a lot of you as, as uh, we move forward. Because uh, it's Thanks so much. got a lot of money to spend. we got to spend it right. So let's hope, let's hope Exactly. For that. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, let's now uh, welcome one, another voice uh, on infrastructure and on the plan itself, Dan Clifton uh, from Strategus Research Partners. You want to spend time talking about um, what we're spending it on or how we're raising the money to spend it, uh, Dan? I think both issues you, you wrote about. Uh, yeah, yeah we, let, we can do both. And good morning, Joe. Uh, you know, I, I think in a post-COVID world, we've had an unlimited credit card of government spending to make sure that we dealt with the pandemic. We've done $5 trillion of stimulus, and we haven't paid for any of it. Now we're at a new turning point here. We've put forward a new spending plan yesterday, and it's going to have a lot of spinach. And so the way that I like to talk about it is, you know, we were doing a lot of candy, no spinach. Now we're getting some candy and we're starting to get some real spinach here with these tax increases. And so we have to say to ourselves, what is the net effect of not just this plan, but you know there's another one coming on April 12th or April 19th that's going to be another series of spending and tax increases. And what does that mean for the U.S. economy moving forward? And I would argue that we're going to see more tax increases than government spending based on that plan that we saw yesterday. The infrastructure spending the secretary was just talking about has a very long lag time to be spent. It takes years for that money to come out. We learned that with Obama in 2009, but that's really been true for the last 50 or 60 years in the United States. And the tax increases are immediate. And some of these tax increases, while they may look manageable, you're talking about a trillion dollars on US multinational foreign income. You're talking about almost two trillion dollars of tax increases over 15 years, and that's going to impact earnings per share on S&P 500 companies. That's going to impact competitiveness, and overall, I, I think it's going to be a net drag to the U.S. economy, both in 2022 and 2023, all else being equal. Now, there could be a situation where members of Congress delay some of those tax increases from coming into effect because they're worried about those tax increases in a midterm election year. But even if those tax increases don't come into effect, we're probably still going to see a fiscal drag just because we did almost $3 trillion of stimulus this year. And that's going to be very hard to replace next year. You now, when we it. look at the actual spending, where is that spending focus? Well, $115 billion is on highways of the $2 trillion. That's the traditional infrastructure in Washington. And there may be some, some good reasons to do grid modernization and have a utility capex cycle, which is probably going to come and benefit industrial stocks. Uh, I do think that there's going to be a continued push for renewable energy. We're talking about almost $200 billion for charging stations of EVs. This is going to have an impact and it's going to benefit the companies that are in that area. But there will be fewer companies that get that money than companies that get tax increases. And overall, this is going to be a net drag to the U.S. economy, at least in the short run, Joe. In the short run, that, well, that's the question because that's not the way it's being uh, it's, it's being exactly. sold. One yep. point. So, how, for how long? How many years will it be a drag before it starts paying off? If it ever does, you know, I, we'll know more once we see the Biden budget and the way they lay that spending out. But rule of thumb, Joe, is that for every dollar allocated on infrastructure, only twenty percent come out in the first year. So they're arguing that they want to do about uh, you know uh, 
uh, I don't know, 200 billion per year in infrastructure somewhere in that range. And so you take 20% of that, that means you get about 40 billion in the first year, you'll get 80 billion in the second year. So it takes a couple of years for it to really ramp up and get to the level that's actually being authorized. And the reason that happens is you got to plan, you got to get permits, you got to you got to do the, the site designs, the architecture, all that stuff takes a lot of time. And by the way, it may increase productivity over long periods of time, but don't think that you're going to see this money immediately in 2022. And, and and even in 2020. I don't know if we have time to go into your calculation of, of the taxes on corporate yep. income and, and what yep. it goes up to, but that's a disturbing right. number, 62.7, yep. the highest in the OECD. And that, that's that, correct. That, that can't help, can it? it is the no, it, it we... doesn't help at all. I mean, wait, well, look, it's one thing to say, okay, we're going to raise the rate to 28%, but you're also raising the dividend rate to 40%. And so that means the effective tax rate on 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 on, invest, on profits is almost 70 percent it makes the u.s totally uncompetitive and i think the point is that after we improved our international tax laws to bring us in line with the with the rest of the world we had over uh, 1.6 trillion dollars of company yeah. repatriating their profits back right? to america and, that, and investing in yeah, america and i think you're going to see a lot less of this if All those right. international tax increases on u.s companies horrible go things <laughs> you're saying terrible things you're just you're, too, you're way too partisan for, for us with the, all these numbers and stuff but uh Anyway, thanks. Uh, I, I, no, I know. I know these are actual numbers, but I know that's actual what I'm going to get, that's what I'm gonna get on there. Twitter. That's what I'm going to get. Yep. Coming up, uh, we'll have you back. Coming up, breaking Great. initial Thank jobless you. claims data. We'll try to fix it. Stockbox will be right back.